Hi everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day. I was just sitting here, it's heading towards the evening, and uh, it's getting a little dark, so I didn't want to record this outside as I am often outside. But I just wanted to kind of go live for a moment and just kind of get some things I was thinking about today. So today is a big day. Today is the start of the Olympics. And I was sitting around, I was thinking about the Olympics. I was just kind of focusing on that, saying, are the Olympics really good this year? Should we be doing this? And so I said, you know what, let me let me jump here. Let me go live, just kind of think about it and just kind of outline some pros and cons. And then hopefully later on, you all can watch this and let me know what are some of your thoughts about the Olympics this year and kind of give me your opinion in the comment section. I think that'd be really good. So let's let's just go ahead and jump right into this and talk about it from the pros side, right? So on the positive side, you have global cooperation, nations coming together. The Olympics has a long and storied history and continue to move forward. You know, uh, and so from that standpoint, you would say that the Olympics are good. It's good to be having the Olympics. Everyone's working together. People are still moving forward, moving in the same direction. So from that standpoint, you could say that the Olympics are good uh, in the midst of a so that's one pro. Let's move to the second one. In the midst of a enduring global pandemic, for people to be able to come together, many nations coming together for an event like the Olympics shows a an enduring global spirit, right? Working together to overcome this crisis. Although the Olympics is not necessarily about the crisis or not about the pandemic, it is about people having that opportunity to kind of work together nation to nation. Hi, Jenny, how are you doing? So that's just kind of my thought on that for people to be able to work together as well. I think that is also really good from a positive standpoint. And then the last thing I have from the positive side on the pro side is that there are athletes who have been training, you know, since they were kids, you can almost say their entire lives building up for the moment of being an Olympian. You know, it, I played high school sports, I, I did college sports, but I never had that level of dedication that it takes to put into a craft, to put into a skill set. Like Olympians pour so much of their of their life, of their well-being, of everything. I mean they they sacrifice dances and partying and and they they play injured, they sacrifice so much just to be prepared to go out there and perform during the Olympics. And then, you know, they, their entire nation cheers for them, you know, regardless of sports. So if you're, you're, if you're British, if you're American, if you're Canadian, uh, Falco, how you doing? What, you know, for whichever nation you represent, Brazil, it doesn't matter. Your nation is gonna be behind you, supporting you. And that is a great thing from the standpoint of of the athletes. So those are just a couple pros. Again, so we said global cooperation and uh, enduring spirit, global enduring spirit, and these athletes have prepared. If any of you have any other thoughts about some particular pros, we're going to get to the cons in, in just a few minutes. But if anyone else has any thoughts about some of the pros of having the Olympics, go ahead and, and throw those down and uh, let's kind of, let's talk about that. Let's discuss that. Okay, Winnie says, uh, this could be some athlete's only chance to be an Olympian. That is correct. I was reading. Um, so, for so, you know, a lot of athletes, their training is geared towards them to peak during the Olympic season. And many of them have already had to delay one year. And uh, there's already a couple uh, that's going to tie more to the negatives. But I've already saw that a couple of athletes, um, they, 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 this was it. They have prepared for this. And they know that after this point, they won't be able to move forward with with Olympic aspirations because you know the four years apart. And they know they will be past their their professional peak or past past their peak as far as their, as far as their athleticism. And so, those are a couple. That's another that's another good pro. And so let's move on to the other side of the coin. We talked about the pros a little bit. Let's let's talk about the cons, and. The first one is the obvious one, the elephant in the room, 
is the fact that there is still an active pandemic going on right now, today, uh, at this very moment, I think even Tokyo is under some form of lockdown. So that's the first one. Um, would you want to move forward with something like an Olympics when there's a global pandemic going on? You know, every day, every hour, every minute, people are still getting infected, people are still dying. And the, the biggest and most important thing is, I think I have here written down, I looked it up, only about 26.9% of the world's population has received one dose of any vaccine and 13% of the world's population have received two days doses. So whether you believe in a vaccine or not, that's a whole separate different discussion. We're going to just move forward with that. But uh, so the pandemic is still real and, 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 and uh, people are going out there and athletes are getting sick. That is moving into the second one. If you read in the news, you're going to see a lot of things talking about athletes who um, are not going to be able to participate. One that hurt me really badly was uh, her nickname is uh, Coco, but Coco Golf, she's a tennis player, American tennis player. She has COVID, so she's not going to be able to participate in this year's Olympics. And I was reading about another athlete who uh, will not be able to participate, and she says this was going to be her last hurrah, so to speak. This was her last opportunity. And she's not going to be able to participate. They're uh, from the Netherlands. I think there are several, several members of their volleyball team won't be. So we can just go down a list of athletes who are you know, prepared to play but won't be able to play because they themselves have contracted COVID in the midst of all of the testing that has to be going on. But when they leave their countries and arriving in, in Japan and so forth, still active pandemic. So... On the con side, that's a pretty strong con to having a to having a pandemic, to having a, 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 a an Olympics during a pandemic. Mike, here let me read this comment. Right, so still on a point that's the least amount of pain in terms of travel for all the athletes in a super stadium. Well, there's that, you know, we can get into the cost of the Olympics for every nation that hosts it. For many years, nations have complained about the, the cost because when you move it from location to location, every city that it goes to has to build all of those arenas and, and those things tend to cost quite a bit of money. And as the Olympics continue to grow, uh, moving forward, those those venues are going to continue to, to cost even more. So if you could pick a standardized location, I guess that would be would be good long term for something, uh, you know, if you could do something like that, I think that would be would be very helpful if that's what you were kind of getting at. So I was just thinking about those things. So, yeah, there are more than 90 cases of COVID and people connected to the games. U.S. volleyball player. Yes, the list is just ongoing. And today, uh, my favorite tennis player, uh, Naima Osaka, she she opened up the Olympics, I think, just a few hours ago. Uh, and so she's she's still in it, and you know you have to normally you're worrying about oh will they will will my favorite athlete that I love to see play will they get injured or you know in this year you have to hope that they don't catch COVID before they get the opportunity to perform and make it through all the rounds that they would have to make it through. So those were some of the things that I was just thinking about when I was sitting around because you know as a kid I loved watching the Olympics and. And uh, of course, track and field is some of my favorite, but I love sitting up late at night in, in America. Late at night is when a lot of the more odd sports would come along. Uh, the decathlon, not, not saying that that's odd, but some of the more odd archery, just the things that you don't normally see on, on television. Those are come on like two, three in the morning. And, and when I was young and even growing up all my whole life, I love watching the Olympics. And, and so this year I do, I do intend to watch as much as I can, hopefully, a lot of it would be streamed on YouTube and I can watch it, you know, later and after the fact. But those were some of the things I just wanted to jump on here and, and talk about. So does anyone else have any any pros or any cons or any thoughts? And again, if you if you're I'm gonna, I'm gonna post this up. So it's gonna go live now, but it's gonna be streamed on the channel. So if you have any comments, if if you follow me at all, you know that I, I am constantly reading the comments. I try to reply to as many as I possibly can. Uh, I try to always be there. So, I don't know. Mike, you see, Mike says, uh, if the team, 
uh, gets COVID, does the other team automatically win? I, I do not know how they're going to handle that. I think there's already been like one or two teams that have been and I don't know, is, that, is, it, is it a disqualification? Are they disqualified? Is that what you is that what you would call it? Or I guess you would call it some form of medical not prepared. I don't I can't think of, a, of the right term for that. But yeah, so if you're gonna play a team and, and you know, two or three people on that other team catch COVID in the middle of the games, I guess your team, the non-COVID team, non-COVID catching team, I guess you would move forward. So in effect, you you would win, right? So yeah. So there was a finished player. That's I guess that's already happened. Catch catch COVID. Let's say you, then the next team next team move forward. So London, twenty twelve was the best ever Olympics. Uh, I I won't know. I don't I don't know. I, I thought the uh, well there was a bit of drama with the Atlanta games. I like the I like the uh, I like the Atlanta games. I really. To tell you the truth, I had really wanted to go to Japan uh, to to be at this Olympics. I thought, you know, and I know how much because I I studied Japanese uh, for a few years there. Just I was just interested, and so I studied Japanese. Uh, I, I watched anime, so I studied it, and I learned a lot about the nation and, and the culture and the people. And I know that the nation of Japan poured you know billions of, upon billions of dollars into preparation for this Olympics. I mean. And think about how many people this that's the nation state you know we've all kind of been derailed in some form of fashion by by COVID. and i think that that kind of becomes the over, overarching thing even for you know if you have your personal opinion about whether COVID is good or bad i don't mean good i mean like real or not real is what i mean so it's not good but i'm saying like if it's real or not real if you're on that side oh i, I don't believe in it i do believe in it whether you believe in it or not whether you you can't deny that it has had an effect on your life uh, in the sense of lockdowns and things being closed. So we've all been affected by it. Uh, but I really I really wanted to go to this Olympics when the year that it was scheduled. So I hate that I, I hate that I missed it. But yeah, that was it, guys. I just wanted to jump on here real quick. And I wanted to talk about some of the pros and cons of the Olympics. I'm going to give you my. I agree with that. It would be kind of hollow if the reason you end up getting uh, you end up getting your your award is because everyone that you're going to compete against. So several people are, let's say, you know, you're the number two or three ranked athlete and you wanted to do your very best and uh, you you were ready to come out there and you win, not because you, you went out and outperformed everyone. You you win because two or three of the other key players and top players uh, contracted COVID during the games or something along that line. So that would be, that would kind of get you feel as though there'd be an asterisk beside, beside your accomplishment. I could definitely see that. I could definitely see that. My overall, if I had to pick a side, pro or con, and I try to be a really positive person in general, but um, I think that the risks are just too great. The, the overall global, as far as the amount of people who've been vaccinated in Japan and just across the globe, it's just not high enough. Uh, it's already been borne out, in my opinion, as far as the amount of people who've already athletes who can't participate. It's it's going to be a, an Olympics with an asterisk beside it, you know. Um, but it is still good since it is still happening. I'm going to support it uh, because it is happening. I'm not against the Olympics. I'm I just kind of I just feel like this is an unfortunate thing that we've all been kind of drug into. So we've all been kind of pulled into it. All right, I just want to jump on here, talk about that. Again, if you, if you, uh, if you comment on this later on, you want to, then you know I'll, I'll get back with those comments. We can kind of continue the discussion in the comment section about the Olympics, good or bad, pro or con, should it be happening? Right, and I can understand that is that is absolutely your your right and your opinion to that. I'm not, I'm not here to try to sway anyone on either side. Uh, uh, forward or against it. I'm just saying that you have to admit the, you know, they didn't close the stores for those who believe or don't believe in COVID. They close the stores for everyone and the lockdowns kind of apply to everyone. And so I hope that we all continue to, to get back. I want to travel and, and kind of hope the world can kind of eventually get back to the kind of the way it will never be the same, but uh, the, a new normal that is a little better than the normal we have right now. All right, guys. Um, all right. Take care.